Hi everybody and welcome to your 6th chapter in your Java EE tutorial. Today we'll be talking about web applications and how to create both websites and the web applications that run the websites. So let's get right into it. Web applications are created in two ways. Either you create the presentation side or the service side. So presentation oriented um, web, app web applications are basically web pages or websites. This is the one that you're uh, most familiar with, the one that actually interacts with the user. While service-oriented web applications take care of the endpoint of the web service. Basically, um, it takes care of all the data in the, uh, in the stuff behind that's going on in the background. So taking a look at that, we can see how a web application request handling service works. So your web client or your website over here would send a request. Let's say it wants to click on a button and this request is then uh, turned into the, these web components. It then interacts with the database, sees if it can pull out some stuff and then it either goes uh, and sends a response or goes to your Java bean, sends it back. And then once it's done, it then sends, then sends a response back to the web client. And this happens in the milliseconds. Like this is so fast. This is happening thousands of times per second, which is absolutely crazy because like this is, there's so much happening in the background and I'll teach you how to do this exactly. Now let's take a look at servlets versus JSF versus facelets. Now, servlets are just Java classes that work with the service-oriented applications. It also works with the presentation-oriented side by dispatching requests and handling non-textual data, which means that data that isn't um, supported in a text format. And JSF and facelet pages, which are better at generating text-based applications like XHTML, XML, and such. Now let's take a look at web containers. So web components are supported within web containers that apply a number of services. For example, request dispatching, security, lifecycle management, and concurrency. And APIs like transactions and messaging and email. Now that you're equipped with that knowledge, let's go into our NetBeans example. Now in our NetBeans, before you start this, you want to look at chapter two of my tutorial series so you get all the examples. So all you got to do is open project and let's navigate all the way to my C drive. So in my C drive, I have my Glacius 5, which is where I save my Glacius 5 directory. You may have it somewhere else, but in my case, it's in the C drive. So we just open this guy up and we can go into our docs, Java E tutorial, go into examples and we can click on web. JSF, and you'll see one called Hello One. You can open that project up, and this Hello One project, all it's doing is it's just uh, looking at um, what name that you want that you give it to, and it just returns a simple Hello, your name. So while we wait for this, okay, all right. So a few things that you want to take a look at. Let's go into our web pages and let's go to our index.xhtml. In here, you'll find that it's just a simple XHTML page. But one thing that you want to take a look at is our input text, which here it says that um, it's asking for your name. You input your name. And then, uh, of course, required is true. It means that you have to put this in or else it's not going to give anything. And then it'll give an error message if anything else happens. Then you just submit it using the command button. And then that's gonna go to our response.xhtml. And inside here, we have our hello, and it takes the name of what you gave it to, and has a image of Duke waving. Then let's take a look at our manage bean. Inside our manage bean called hello.java, you can see that it's just getters and setters, which the um, xhtml files use. Here you can see that it's at named, which defines it as a managed bean, and it has at request scope, which means that it can only deal with one request at a time. One request will have one response, and one request will have another response. Next, let's take a look at everything that holds it all together, our web.xml. This is our metadata, 
basically data about our data. What are what this these files are going to do? Here, what's interesting is our welcome file list, which is which has only one welcome file, which is our index.xhtml. This means that when this program runs, it will run this index.xhtml first. Now let's take a look at how to run this program. All you got to do is go into your servers, double uh, right click the left server and click start. Now that that's over, we can then right click our hello one, click build. What this does when you click build is it packages your Java code into a war file. This war file is then you can see under your Glassfish server in your res or sorry, your applications. And you can see that your hello one is right over here. Now what you can do is you can go into your web application or your Chrome and type in HTTP if it would HTTP slash slash local host 8080 slash hello one. And that will pop up this. Hello, my name is Duke. What is yours? We can put in something like Viprov and we can submit it and you'll get back. Hello, Viprov. Now you can go back and you can put in something else. Let's say some gibberish and you can reset it. Gibberish again and submit it and hello. Plop. So that's how the hello one example works. Now that you got that down, let's take a look at our hello two example. So to stop this program from running, all you gotta do is either click uh, clean or you can go into your services, go into your servers uh, and go into applications and remove this war file. Let's just do undeploy. Okay, so now that that's gone, if we reload this, this won't work anymore, which is perfect. We don't want it anymore. So let's go into our hello one and click clean. All that clean does is it cleans up the background files. So we're ready for the next project. Once you're done cleaning, let's right click our hello one and uh, click close. Let's open up our new project. This one is going to be our hello two. And if we go back one folder, go into servlet, hello two. And what this is, is it uses servlets instead of um, JSP, uh, JSF or JSP and HTML. And in this case, it just uses HTML and um, the servlets. So here you'll see that the, our only web pages are just resources. So there's nothing over here. The only things that are there are our greeting servlet and our response servlet. So in our greeting servlet, you'll see that we have a lot of H, like quote unquote HTML code, which is printed out using Java. This is really not recommended, um, but like I'll explain that um, in the later chapters because you, re you really don't want to mix HTML and Java together like this. But in this case, this will have to do. But one thing I want to divert your attention to is this at web servlet slash greeting. What this means is that whenever you type in your URL, when you put slash greeting, this code will run. And this greeting servlet extends the HTTP servlet, which makes this greeting, well, this Java class into a servlet. And it overrides the do get method, which takes in a request and sends out a response. Now, when you type in your name and everything, it will then go to this response servlet, which then also has, it's also servlet because of the extended uh, HTTP servlet. And it has its at web servlet, which has slash response, which means that in your web URL, if you put slash response, you'll have, um, you'll run this code. Now let's take a look at this code in action. Let's build this. And once you're done building, let's go to our Google Chrome and type in HTTP slash slash local host 8080, oops, 8080 slash hello two and put in slash greeting. 
Now it's the same thing. You just type in whatever you want, what your name is, and you can click submit and it gives out the exact same response. One thing that you want to take a look at is inside our URL, you will see this question mark, username at viprov. This is how the get method, which we saw here, this is how the get method works. What it does is it takes in um, parameters through the URL and it returns whatever the it's whatever is inside the Java code. So if I were to change this, let's say um, Pranav, I would get hello Pranav. So you can see that the get method isn't very safe, I guess. Like um, you don't want people to just be changing everything around just by using the U URL, right? So there's another method called uh, do post which doesn't use the URL, it uses something else, but I'll be talking about it in the next chapter, uh, in the later chapters. But this is all you need to know about this example today. And that's it. That's all there is about um, our web applications. And we'll take a look at it more into the web tier. Next chapter, we'll be talking about JSF, how we can use um, basically the server side component of the framework for building web applications. And we'll also be talking about um, the presentation side like HTML, XHTML, and so on. But that's it for this tutorial, and I hope I'll see you in the next video.